Light flowers, light bulbs, and even light bugs, folks. Wow, it's going to be quite the illuminating day, I'd say. From specific uses to lost mechanics, unlimited light to renewable fuel, and even a set of unusual sources to top it all off, these little cave flowers have more to them than meets the eye. So let's discuss. And we'll begin with how to find these light flowers, of course. And while it will be possible to stumble upon them in nearly every biome down in the caves, the best biome to do so will be that of the wilds, folks. Not only will many just be encountered within and leading to the wilds proper, there is just a good chance that a branch will be filled in massive numbers of them within an unofficial biome I call the light bulb biome. So get to looking, then get to picking. There are four variants of light flowers to pick from as well. Single, springy, double, and triple everyone. Obviously, the number of balls that we can physically see on the ends of each flower will indicate how many balls we will get per pick, so nothing too difficult there. Do note, however, that single and springy flowers will take three days to regrow, doubles will take four to five days, and six days will be needed to pass for triple light flowers to get back their bulbs. Ah, and I don't usually cover this aspect of things, but what happens in the event of an unfortunate fire destroying these things since we can't transplant or grow our own? Well, it's simple. The world actually regrows them through, well, world regrowth, folks. The most basic type of regrowth to boot. In short, after five days of being destroyed, the world will try to literally just spawn another within a radius around the original spawn. So don't worry, you're not gonna run out of light flowers anytime soon. But here are some other notes before we get to the good stuff. Light flowers light up when approached slash hit with other light sources if they're out of their dormant stage. So this is why we see a cascading effect occur when running throughout this biome and around these things all the time. But beard, dormant stages, what are they? Well, light flowers do not stay lit forever, folks. So after about a minute and a half, they go dormant for about two more minutes. The thing is though, this just merely impacts the light that they throw out. We can still absolutely interact with them and thus pick their bulbs during this time. But yes, let's start talking the actual big balls of light, shall we? Light bulbs are edible. However, they only heal for one stinking health alone and will not actually provide a personal light source unlike other edible things down here in the caves. Still, a note to take away from Bob's alone is that they provide enough light to stave off Charlie when simply dropped on the ground. So, if you have to, use that to your advantage. However, one of the main uses of light bulbs will be that of the lantern craft and of course, refueling. While we will be needing an alchemy engine to have access to the craft itself, a mere two light bulbs are all that is needed for a portable, refuelable, droppable light source. It's good stuff. Oh, and yes, the light bulbs can also be used as fuel for lanterns as they restore 19% of a lantern's fuel each time, which is second only the fireflies. But note as well that miner's hats also accept light bulbs as fuel at the same refueling levels. So there's that too. To continue, however, here is a use that used to be amazing, but is now almost obsolete, unfortunately. Light bulb manure gathering. For you see, pigmen eat light bulbs, folks, and thus produce manure. So we just used to drop a bunch around them like this, or better yet, forcibly turn a pig into a were pig to have them go through stacks of light bulbs in seconds to net us stacks of manure. And I say used to, because we did this all the time when farm plots cost manure. And that is obviously not the case anymore. 
So oddly enough, not only has this once staple mechanic become situational at best, it's almost like manure doesn't really matter anymore. Now that's probably a little dramatic, I'm just mostly talking in the context of light bulbs of course, and yeah, manure is still used in single plant fertilization, farm plot fertilization, mushroom planters, and of course for many of Wormwood's mechanics. But. So is rot, folks. And light bulbs quickly spoil and easily become one of the best late game sources of rot. So we're at a bit of a crossroads here. Both are very good. That is not actually my thought process. I just kind of realized how the wear pig manure method has become a shell of its former self while literally recording this video. So I'm still coming to grips with that. But you know what? I'm already freaking over it because we're talking some of my favorite moms in the entire game. Skitter squids. Why though? Well, cause they swim, spin, ink, stink, and have a 33% chance to drop a single light bulb. That's why everyone. Now that really should be higher or even guaranteed, especially as they were added to give people who can't run caves a way to make lanterns, but hey, that's just me. Moving on to Slurpers, another very good mob that I haven't talked about in ages. But Slurpers also drop light bulbs, and unlike the Skitter Squids, they roll in action and provide a guaranteed two light bulbs per death. Good stuff. And the last source of the day, Big Tentacles, as they have an 80% chance to drop a single light bulb too. So there you go. Not the best, but hey, it's a thing. But folks, there is just no freaking way we can make a video on light flowers and light bulbs without talking about the light flowers of the Lunar Grotto. Because here's the thing, they're not actually light flowers, everyone. Oh no. They're light bug flowers. The flowers of the grotto don't have a dormant stage and instead spawn new mobs called bulbous light bugs on occasion. There will be one bug per flower and the bugs return to their flowers after a short little time of just flying about the biome. And there are some really cool notes to take on these things for sure. So listen up. But of course, in keeping with the context of this video, for one final thing, note that light bugs drop a light bulb upon death and respawn in 12 days. Have fun. But yes, to truly get the most out of these illuminous insects, we will need a bug net, folks. As yes, we can pick and then capture bulbous light bugs like fireflies or bees, for example. And we do this for one very specific reason quote unquote, unlimited light sources. For you see, if you have a bulbous light bug in your inventory, up to three others nearby will begin to constantly circle around and follow you anywhere, even through big tentacle wormholes, folks. And yes, we can carry a ton of them up to the surface within our inventories, drop all but one wherever we wish to, and illuminate both ourselves and base potentially forever with bugs that will never die unless killed by another mob or survivor. Yeah, it's kinda nuts. And yes, it is as easy as it looks and sounds. And yes, you can do it again in 12 days. So enjoy. But remember how I said big tentacles were our last source of the day, folks? Well, I lied. Mostly because this true last source is just stupidly so late game-esque that I'm throwing it in at the end for some fun, really. The forest variant of the reanimated skeleton, aka the fuel weaver, spawns ferns, light flowers, and even glow berries in its wake as it follows us with a shadow thurple in our hands. And if you have bloody zero clue as to what I just went on about, then you've got a final boss to kill and some homework to do. Good luck. But there you have everyone, a guy on light flowers, light bulbs, and even bulbiz light bugs all at once. All three are pretty amazing actually, and dare I say essential in certain cases, so I hope this video lights the way towards appreciating them all more and more for ya. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, light it up, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye bye.